It's Leatherface with a loincloth as we have a look today at the Funko Savage World Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface. When last we left this reviewer, he had already looked at the Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger, and he continues hopeful that the rest of this line is going to be just as cool as the last two figures that he's looked at. How about the first thing we do is measure how tall Leatherface stands. We'll put it right to the top of his head, as we did before with both Jason and Freddy. The figure stands, to no surprise, at 6 inches in height, which, translating that to centimeters, stands 15.3. And speaking of no surprise, here's the other two figures that we've looked at so far. Jason, Freddy, meets Leatherface. They are all sharing the exact same mold. Well, once you strip away all the other stuff that's on top of their surfaces, they're utilizing the exact same similar mold. You can probably see it a little bit more closer when you compare Leatherface to Jason, because Freddy, of course, is masking his mold with all those additional scars. This is pretty cool. Leatherface gets two accessories, a la something like Trapjaw would have got from the Masters of the Universe line. He gets a clubbing mallet, and he also gets himself a very serrated chainsaw. I like the look of both of these because they look like they're barrel drums, something that looks like it's made out of wood, and he's got the little rivet points around the outer area and around the outer area there of the mallet. Now, they both attach to his arm the exact same way. There's peg holes on the underside right there. And whatever one that you're deciding to go with, you simply just have to take it and wedge it over top, push it down uh, onto Leatherface's uh, ball joint there. You really don't actually have to push them down all the way. Pushing them down more than what I've just uh, done has uh, will certainly cause some additional frustration and just stress on your part. You really don't even need to do that. Granted, they do pop off easy, but just with a little enough sufficient pressing down, even if you just leave a little bit of a gap, the weapon still stay in his hand perfectly fine. And just to show you how it looks with the mallet, Take the same idea, the same process that we had done before. I'm just going to wiggle it over top. If you do find that you want to push it down even further and the ball joint just isn't helping you much at all, what the simple fix is, you can submerge this part in hot water. It's just enough to soften the socket, and then that should be very easy, uh, very easy to fit over top of his arm. But for the time being, just showing you di directly out of packaging, as I try to do, you can see that uh, it's a little bit more of a difficult feat to get those plugged into his arms. Just press, press, press. And again, last thing you really would want to do is break the handle portion of the mallet, or at the very least, you certainly do not want to be breaking the chainsaw. This isn't soft plastic, guys. It's a little bit more of a denser plastic, and uh, there's very little of it attaching to the bottom base here. So you really don't want to put too much pressure on it in case you accidentally break that off. So I'm just going to stick with the chainsaw for the time being because it's the one I've been most successful with. And I also just think it's more closest to what something Leatherface would wield. The mallet is a nice effect. And I guess really, if you wanted to, you could take the mallet and fit it into his other hand if you want to make use of it. What they could have done too, being that this sort of reminds me of Trapjaw, is they should have had like a little compartment on the back where you could have attached whatever limb he wasn't using into his back just so that you could have, have actually had him display with both if you didn't want to display it in his hand. I really like Leatherface. Uh, the face sculpt is decent enough that it looks enough like Leatherface. I can't help but also notice he's got square pupils. What's going on with that? 
Still though, you've got the very predominant stitching to tell you, yeah, this is made out of someone's skin. Pity the poor chaps that Leatherface has run across where he's had to make this. It would have been neat also if they had done this in different colors, looking as if he had actually taken it from animals and not so much just other cavemen or other savages, if you will. Very, very accurate sort of Leatherface attire. Gone is the shirt, gone is the tie, but he still has his apron, of course, to trap all the sufficient amount of blood that gets splattered across his torso. Clearly, some of it has missed the apron and makes its way across his chest, but most of it, if not all of it, has made its way to the apron. The apron is slightly softer plastic, and he's got a chain that wraps its way around on top of that. For some reason, I find that Leatherface's torso is a little on the shaky side. Even if we just reach off camera, we'll just put him down here for a second. He's also a little bit more trickier, I find, to get him to properly stand. Leather, or Freddy doesn't have that problem. He doesn't seem to teeter, if you will, uh, like Leatherface does. I'm not really sure what's causing him specifically to, uh, to teeter. It could just be the fact that there's an, a little bit more of a gap it could also be, too, just his legs. That's probably what it is. It's his legs that's causing him to teeter. It's not really so much the top, although the top does does wiggle a little bit. I think most of it's actually in his legs. He's got the fur loincloth, a little bit longer on the front than on the back. I like that you get a little bit of layers here, too. You've got the, the apron. You've got the loincloth underneath that, and then you've got his leggings. His leggings are actually the same color as Freddy Krueger's, minus big gashes that are in the fabric. Uh, then he's got his fur boots. I mean, if you like, look at the two figures. I just happen to bring these two in, but you'll see that the legs are identical to one another, except for the open gashes. And the boots are also identical. A lot of carryover components between figure to figure, but that's perfectly fine. One side I really like is that he's got the belted... This almost kind of reminds me of Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Instead of be being further down on his leg, instead he's actually got the, in, the harnessed brace around his forearm. On the other side, he's got a longer, um, almost looks like a welder's glove or like a butcher's glove he's got on the other side. Like, again, really neat looking design on Leatherface, taking more solid cues than I think um, Jason, which we happen to look at first, I think didn't... If it wasn't for Jason's hockey mask, I don't think I would see Jason. Here, I think even if you change the mask, it would look very much like a Leatherface sort of figure. So I think this one's a little bit more successful, much like, uh, you know, much like Freddy was a very successful looking figure. Let's go ahead and take the mallet out of his hand. We don't need to keep that going on there. Posability on this guy. His head rotates all the way around. His arms also rotate all the way around. His waist swivels, and it's a little harder to kind of get in there. I see, I do see the more I rotate the waist that there's this big noticeable gap between it. I wonder if it's because the apron here is so thick that it almost seems to push its way off of the lower waist of the figure. It's a possibility. But needless to say, his, his waist swivels, and then his legs are ball jointed. They move forward, they move back, they move out. And uh, that's pretty much, in a nutshell, his possibility. The idea that's popped right into my head, just as literally as I said, I, as I say that, as I just said my last sentence, one thing I really would have loved to see Funko do with this line, above and beyond expanding it to a series two, I'd love to see them actually do vehicles. Could you imagine how cool vehicles would be for a Savage Land version of Leatherface? You could give it some really cl clever name, like the... I don't know, the, like the Slaughter Express or something like that, where it was a really crude looking vehicle, big giant wheels that had spikes and human skulls and stuff on it. Still in the almost playful way that Masters of the Universe ran their toy lines with vehicles, I'd love to also see them do the exact same thing here with the Savage World.
Sure, okay, it's probably wishful thinking that this collector would want vehicles, but if they're expanding and doing more and more with the Savage World, and if they're taking some cues from the Masters of the Universe, one thing Masters of the Universe did so well was not only releasing a whole ton of different characters, but they also released vehicles. And I'd love to see them also do the same for Savage World. Could you imagine, again, a vehicle designed specifically for Leatherface, or like the Nightmare Van, uh, for example, for Freddy Krueger, I'm just kind of throwing out some ideas there, for example. Uh, that would be really, really neat. I don't see Funko probably expanding that far into the line other than just releasing figures. At the very least, we can hope that there may be a Series 2. Series 1 consisted of Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Pinhead, Michael Myers, and the Leatherface that we've looked at right here. What would you guys like to see for a Series 2 if Funko decided to do that? This is a nice amalgamation, as I've mentioned before, between old vintage toy line and really cool horror icons. It's a really clever idea that Funko has come up with, and I definitely would like to see them do more than just five figures. Today's spooktacular review, we were having a look at the new Funko Savage World, and this was Texas Chainsaw Massacre's Leatherface. If you guys managed to pick up any of these for yourself, let me know down below what you think of them. And what do you guys think of the possibility of having vehicles as part of this line as well? Is that something you would like to see? Or do you think they just should stick to figure form? Either way, we're still going to have a look at Pinhead and Michael Myers. I know I kind of said I was going to look at Michael Myers next, but I sort of just veered off. I think we're going to look at Michael Myers last. Because I think he's going to be my favorite of the batch. We're going to keep him for the last... So expect the review of Pinhead to be coming up in the next video and make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below so you'll never miss out when new videos like Hellraiser's Pinhead and Halloween's Michael Myers, you'll never miss out when those videos go online. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.